Hello lovely sim racers, it's Konstantinos and this is Lovely Sim Racing. I'm going to show you how you can convert any basic steering wheel that has at least one absolute encoder into a multifunctional dial. One of the most sought out features of high-end steering wheels is the multifunction dial, essentially using one dial and depending on its position, you can control the output of other buttons or dials on your steering wheel. Now, this can be done with high-end steering wheels like the Asher Racing Artura series, the Grey Wolf. But what happens when you have a, a much more basic steering wheel? Well, that's where SimHub comes into play. SimHub is extremely powerful. It's one of the most powerful tools we have for sim racing. And I'm going to show you how you can convert a basic steering wheel into a powerhouse. I'll be using the Simagic GT Neo. It's one of my favorite all around great steering wheels. Out of the box, the Simagic GT Neo comes with four front facing rotary encoders. The two top ones can be converted to absolute encoders. And you can do that simply by holding down the left funky switch and rotating the encoder you want to switch mode to. Now that we have our rotary encoder converted to an absolute encoder, I just double click on this profile. My preference is to convert the dial, the ring to a black color and the selected option to something a bit more loud. So demonstrating now, as I turn the dial, you can see the absolute position of the first rotary encoder that we have selected. Now that we have the hardware part out of the way, we've converted the rotary dial into an absolute encoder and we also changed the colors of the LEDs to make it more apparent in which position we're on, let's head on over to SimHub and start working on magic. In SimHub, what you want to do is navigate to the control mapper on the left-hand side. If control mapper is not listed on the left-hand side, just go to the add features in the bottom left corner and enable it. I won't go into too much detail on control mapper. I have another video, which I will link in the description, where I go into greater detail on how to set up your wheel with control mapper. For the purpose of this tutorial, all we need to do is add our steering wheel to control mapper. And we do that by selecting add new source controller. And here we can find the GT Neo and I just click OK. And now our wheel is inside of the control mapper. You'll notice that there are absolutely no uh, mapped controls at this point. So we will start by doing that. You need to open up the map controller button. This is where the magic happens. What you need to understand is that every position of the absolute encoder is essentially a function. It's not triggering anything. So what you need to do is add as many as the positions of the absolute encoder. In this case, for the GT Neo, we have 12. So let's go on and add 12 functions. To add a function, you can click on the Add New FN button over here, and we'll just add 12. What you need to do is assign each function button to a position of the absolute encoder. I want to have my position one, function one, on the brake bias position. So what I do is I click on to assign and just rotate the dial, the position that I want function one to be in. That has been now recorded. But what's important at this point is that each function button has a transformation momentary to latching group one. These all need to be in the same group to work as a single dial. Let me add one more position and I'll do the other ones off camera. Click assign and all you need to do is move the dial in the right position. That's actually it. Don't forget, every time you need to add it to the momentary to latching group one. Now that we have all of the positions of the multifunction dial from our steering wheel mapped to a function in SimHub Control Mapper, we can move on to assigning the actual triggers for whatever buttons we decide to use. In this case, I have decided to use the second top rotary encoder. To assign an action to any uh, trigger in SimHub Control Mapper, you'll need to scroll down and find the one you want to assign. So we have brake balance, which is also the first one on my sticker that I have on the wheel. Brake balance is function position one on our encoder. Clicking on this, you basically select function one. The second rotary encoder that we're using, because it's just a rotary encoder, it just goes up and down as I turn it left and right. So we want to go down now because this is BB minus. So I just turn 
the rotor encoder down. And you'll see how it captures that feature. And I'll do the same for BB+. So again, I open up the capture. I select function one, and I just turn the rotary encoder to the plus position, and it captures that as a value. So let's just do one more. I will find my triggers for TC minus and TC plus. I will click on them. I will select function number two. I will turn to the left, my rotary dial, and it will capture that button press. I'll do the same thing for TC plus. Again, function two, and I'll move the green dial to the right. As you can see, it captured that button. I'll go on and assign everything else, and I'll do a recap and show you what this looks like. I have mapped every position of the multifunction dial and assign all the plus and minus for all the actions that I wanted to. As you can see in SimHub, everything has been mapped. You'll also note now that when I change the position, of the multifunction dial, it get highlighted inside of the control mapper. Let me show you here. You can see, as I'm moving the dial from brake balance to traction control, to traction control two, to ABS, the actual buttons are being highlighted inside of SimHub. Every time one of those functions is highlighted, it means the output has changed for the right rotary encoder. And you'll also notice, as I'm in uh, position BB, as I turn left and right the rotary encoder, uh, you can see the BB plus and BB minus highlighted below. Same thing goes for TC and TC2 and ABS. You can actually see these buttons being highlighted. The only thing left is to actually go to your game now and map the output of your control mapper to their functions. Again, there's another video that I explain how control mapper works, but essentially, the hardcore part, creating a multifunction dial within SimHub and Control Mapper, is what I just showed you. You can actually pair these functions with a brand new uh, GT Neo rotary dial stickers that I've created, which you can customize to your liking, similar to the ones that you saw on my wheel. And that's it for this video. I hope it was useful. I hope it was easy to understand. And I hope it adds a lot more features and functionality to all your steering wheels. I hope you enjoy it.